Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the 6.5. We are here in the booth, St. Louis, Missouri, Supercomputing 2025, in the booth at Pure Storage. Excited to be joined today by Matt Taylor. Matt is the Vice President and General Manager of AI and HPC at Pure Storage. Big job right now, Matt. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really enjoy it, really excited to be here. Yeah, it's good to have the chance to sit down I, I kind of laughingly have said, this used to be kind of a show for geeks and nerds. Oh yeah. Like researchers, universities, yeah. national labs, you know, maybe a couple of enterprises on the far end of the spectrum that have like really big compute needs. Yeah. And now it's like an AI enterprise show. Oh yeah. I mean, it's almost like GTC level AI focus, which is a really interesting trend actually is, you know, one of the big things we see is this traditional world of HPC and AI are really merging together. And yeah. even like traditional HPC applications, you're seeing now have like AI loops in them. Yeah. And so the worlds are no longer like distinct like they used to be. It's very much one world. And many times the teams that were the traditional HPC teams and enterprises are now being asked to do AI. Yeah. That's one of the big trends we're seeing is, you know, these worlds are definitely merging and there's no longer uh, you know, the HPC team and the AI team, it's one now. Well, there's a lot of uh, overlap in terms of the infrastructure, right? Totally. The amount of compute performance. Now they, you know, uh, HPC likes to talk flops, AI likes to talk tops, but yep. really we go flops, tops, back to flops. But like, there is a massive explosion of AI workloads, you know, like in your view, you know, being on, it's, the data is such an important part. Yep. And where the data is stored, how quickly it's accessible, latency, cloud, all these things are important. Like, yep. what are you seeing driving this explosion beyond the obvious. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's two big trends that I see, and they're kind of two different sides of the market. So on the big foundation model builders, the open AIs, et cetera, just the amount of data that they are, they are using to train these models is exponentially growing every day. Because as they train the models and deploy them, then they get more data from the usage and fill that back into the model. Yep. And so for these large models, the data is just exploding. And then on the other end of side, side of things with really enterprises, what they're recognizing is they have these just treasure droves of data, yep. but they don't know how to actually bring the data to the AI models. Yep. And so what they're really seeing is I need to modernize my overall data infrastructure, move data out of these silos and make it accessible to these great LLMs and great you know, uh, Gen AI models. But one of the challenges they're having is actually doing that. And so at Pure, we're trying to do a little bit of both. So we've launched this new platform called Exa, which is really focused on high performance storage for the large language models and the neo clouds. And the other side, we're spending a lot of time on data pipelines and helping customers break out of their silos and get to use that data to, to generate more value. Yeah, so the storage side's evolving quite a bit too, right? So, you know, as AI continues to proliferate really quickly, exponentially, more data, needs to be more readily accessible in real time. I mean, the enterprise statistics that I'm hearing is like 90 plus, maybe 95% of enterprise data is behind the firewall. Yep. And of that 90, 95%, maybe one or 2% is actually really touched AI yet. Yeah. Yep. Hugely opportunistic, but it definitely changes how you got to think about building your storage, right? Yeah, completely. I mean, you know, the traditional sort of way you thought about is, I deploy an array for an application, and if I need to do more of those, I just kind of replicate that creates these like major silos. And now it's like, great, I have all this data, but how do I get my most precious data, like customer data, to these models? It becomes a really hard challenge. So you have to think about not just the infrastructure, but the layer above that. You think about you know, modernization of Kubernetes and containers, and then the tools that you're gonna plug those into. It becomes a really different challenge versus just, I need to have an application and keep it stable and be able to support X number of users. I now need to figure out how do I take that data and actually get more value out of that. And that's where we're spending a lot of time is helping customers figure out that strategy as well as figure out like the infrastructure that needs to go along with that. So as part of ML Perf, you know, they're starting to look at the storage technologies totally. that are able to, you know, support ML and, and AI workloads. Recent, you know, ML Perf data came out. What was your takeaway in terms of how you scored, how uh, Pure Storage landed in that new, in those new results? Yeah. So, uh, full transparency, you know, we at Pure have not done a lot of this historical benchmarking work, and so when we launched the Flashblade Exa product, which is really focused at high performance storage for the Neo clouds, the foundation model builders, people that really care about the performance of the overall system, we made a decision we were going to go and invest heavily in actually building out a performance lab and being able to do these results. The first one that we chose to do was MLPerf. 
The reason why we like MLPerf is it's a great storage test that actually tests GPU utilization based on the storage infrastructure. Yep. So what it basically tests is, okay, I need to be able to utilize my GPU at a certain rate, and then how many of those can I do in parallel? And so we chose that as the first benchmark we wanted to publish. What we were able to show is that we were up to 2x better than our closest competition on MLPerf, the three training benchmarks they have. And it's really a, a testament to the system we built that really focuses on massive throughput and scalability. So we're super excited about that. We got a bunch more coming, uh, but that was really the first one we focused on because it really does show the value of storage in being able to not bottleneck your GPUs and get the maximum amount of performance and usage you can out of a pretty expensive asset. Uh, a rapidly evolving and changing asset too. It's exciting times in that area. You also have evolved in your you know, types of storage, right? Object. Talk a little bit about why you went that route and what does that mean from an AI standpoint? Yeah, so we've had object support natively at Pure pretty much from the beginning of our FlashBlade product. So you know, 10 plus years we've had object support. But it has been you know, candidly um, you know, mostly used in the cloud is really where a lot of you know, S3 has been used. And enterprises have, have started to use object more and more. What we saw with AI was this just explosion of massive object tiers of data. And you know, a lot of this is coming from the foundation model builders and the large Neo clouds that are looking at their data is available to them. And what they realize is they've got these massive data sets, but they're pretty much in an object pool in a cloud. And what they want to do is figure out how do I get that data into my models? And so the, the, the process of taking that object data, basically moving it into a file format and into your training set has become challenging when you get to these really, really large data sets. Yep. And so what we decided to do was actually take the Exa product, which is really focused on this, on this really high performance training and, and checkpointing use case, and then actually make object support, bring the entire object stack that we had from our FlashBlade product into the Exa product. So the benefit we get is a really, really robust S3 compatible uh, feature set with the massive performance we have in this new platform. And the reason why we, we've always said we were gonna do this, but we got a lot of requests from the big foundation model companies. And actually the reason why we actually pulled this in and announced it is we're actually starting to actually do this with customers in a limited fashion for these really, really large foundation model building use cases. So everything's moving really fast. Part of the challenge of being a, a, a vendor leading in technology innovation is the entire ecosystem. You got your partners, you got you know, the customers. Enterprises have historically not moved quite as fast as say hyperscalers yeah. when it comes to adopting. You actually just talked about that a little bit with S3. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, your partners really need to, these new technologies, they need to, you need to pull them along. They need to pull the enterprises along yeah. because this change is very real. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you're kind of seeing in the partner and, and customer ecosystem and, and how that's moving along. From a pure perspective, you know, we do everything through channel partners. So we're a very channel partner centric. We have a very good, I think, understanding of what's going on in the channel. We, what we've seen is there's a handful of our partners who have really leaned in heavily and have invested in building practices and specialized sales forces to go after this big AI and HPC space. And so we've picked a handful of them and are starting to invest pretty heavily. Uh, some of the examples of this is we actually just went into the WWT AI proving ground here in St. Louis. Yep. Uh, actually just got the Exa platform up and running there. And so you know that's really meant to help customers test new technologies, actually build a complete stack of their application they want to go build and, and deploy, but do that in an environment where they have access to the latest and greatest technologies from a variety of vendors, not just us, you know, a variety of vendors. And what we're really focused on is trying to help our vendors be an accelerant for customers, work with our partners, work with you know, the WWTs, the Penguin Computings of the world to really help customers say, I want to adopt a new technology I can get all the pieces of this really rapidly changing ecosystem together and bring, bring a solution to a level of maturity before I actually go and deploy it. And so we're gonna to continue to do a lot of work with all of our partners on the software side, on the channel partner side of things, 
and increasingly, obviously, with NVIDIA as well. We'll have our uh, bunch of certifications coming out here over the next few months as we got to keep, you know, keep doing the certifications and keep, you know, making it easier for customers to go and deploy these, you know, challenging and rapidly changing technologies. Yeah, you got to pull them along, give them the, uh, give them the education, the knowledge, the access, build those POCs, help them develop them, get them to scale. It's a, it takes a village right now. With AI. <laughs> for sure. Matt Taylor, thanks so much for joining me. Great to meet you. Thanks so much. All right, thank Bye. you. And thank you everybody for being part of this 6.5. We're in the booth here at SC25 St. Louis. We're with Pure Storage here today. Hit subscribe, join us for all the coverage here at Supercomputing 25. And also, of course, all the great coverage on the 6.5. But for this episode, I gotta say goodbye. See y'all later.